Is it worth specking on next gen heroes or are they all on the drop list? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back gainers to another incredible, exciting, fantastic episode of Comic, Comic Game. Game. If you're new to the show, I'm Adam. I'm Zach and this is Princess Royal House looking very lovely today, just like usual. She's doing that princess wave, you do it too. Bow to respect. And of course, there's a cool, cool, cool dog. Arf. Howling, howling Arf. at the moon? Howling at the moon. All right, guys, it is Monday. We are back with a brand new awesome drop list for you guys where every week the Comic Games crew gets together and scours the internet for hot lists, trending lists, any kind of speculation lists that have to do with comic books. And we figure out which of those books one year later have dropped in price. And you get our expert opinion on whether you should uh, maybe invest in the book, pick some up because they're a good deal, or Maybe they were never a good idea to begin with. It should be forgotten forever. No, it should be forgotten forever. But you never know. Yeah. And uh, Zach will also give you his expert slab opinion on uh, which one of these books you might want to pick up in a oh, slab yeah. form. Mm -hmm. In the form of plastic around should. the outside. As you should. All right, guys. But before we get into the drop list, we have to test out a new tasty beverage. Yeah. A big, big Hawaii burger. I think we went to Whole Foods and I found <laughs> this Aurora Bora. Cactus Rosé. <laughs> so Aurora Bora? Aurora Bora. That's awesome. A Cactus Rosé. Is it a wine? No, I think it has zero alcohol in it, I think. Well, Rosé should be wine, right? Herbal sparkling water. Oh, Hello nice. World says on here, this one looks like zero sugar, zero calories. Zero flavor. And zero brain. <laughs> no. Let's get into this. It's okay. It looks like the desert. Isn't it like... The Aurora Borealis in like Alaska? Yeah, yeah, Aurora Borealis is the thing that lights thing in the sky in Alaska. That's the desert version. All right, guys, let's get back to the comics. So, last year there was a lot of good stuff coming out. Uh, we had Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. So, this list is a little bit driven around that with some, some cool books, but we didn't want to go all Shuri, so we'll kind of we'll sprinkle some other stuff in that was trending around that same time, obviously. So, let's kick it off with number five on the list. We got Hulk, number one, from 2008. Ed McGinnis and Jeff Loeb working on this book together, doing some awesomeness. Uh, this is a, kind of a cool and also confusing book, if you're, not, if you're not familiar with this one. This is first cover appearance of the Red Hulk, General Thunderbolt Ross, and... Uh, it's technically his first appearance in comics is Hulk issue number two, the one right after this in story, but it's kind of debatable. So if you read the story in issue one, uh, Thunderbolt Ross kind of pretends to be the regular Hulk, Bruce Banner, and mm -hmm. uh, does some bad stuff. And while uh, Doc Sampson is investigating it, he kind of pieces it together. So as you're seeing it happen, and you're thinking that it's the Green Hulk doing it, but it's actually the Red Hulk. Oh. So you're kind of actually seeing the real Red Hulk, but you're not. Okay. So you, it's kind of debatable. So depending on how it is, this is clearly the more desirable book, uh, probably because the cover is a lot cooler than seeing his reflection in Iron Man's his helmet. Helmet. Yeah. So, but it is it is a uh, exciting book nonetheless. In October of 2022, we got the announcement that Harrison Ford would be taking on the role as the new General Thunderbolt Ross after uh, the unfortunate passing of William Hurt. Who I will always remember for Lost in Space, even though people, not everybody likes that movie, but I always liked it when I was a kid. And he was an important character, the head of the family in that in that movie. But um, I think uh, there's been a lot of controversy on whether or not Harrison Ford is going to be the Red Hulk, go full Red Hulk. I'm pretty sure he is. They're just doing this whole like sidestepping questions like, oh, I'm not going to be doing any of that. And, like, I think at one point they had pictures of him wearing like ripped up pants and he had was doing a lot of like the CG motion capture stuff, and he's like, "Oh, that's for something else. It's not going to be for." Pretty sure he's going full Red Hulk. Plus, I think he would look really cool, uh, you know, CGI'd as the Hulk face would, be, would look really, really fantastic. But be on the lookout, as Zach will always tell you, there is a new stand edition of this book, and this is why I like doing this list because I kind of knew there was a new stand in this book. I had no idea how expensive it was. It's like over a three hundred dollar book in the new stand which is significantly higher. And there's a really cool Ed McGinnis 
one in 50 and there's a limited exclusive which yeah. kind of has the same cover that are both very expensive too so be on the lookout for those guys and, and also be on the lookout for zach's update yeah because price a year ago it was hulking out at 255 for a cgc 9.8 and just like anything that gets big real quick it gets small real quick <laughs> now it's selling for about 200 Range, affordable. yeah, yeah, a range to a hundred to as high as a thousand. For some reason, someone was going crazy on it. Average sales three hundred eight. It's a twenty one percent drop. There's four thousand two hundred sixty one total graded. Only one thousand five hundred fifty two of them are nine point eight. It's about thirty six percent of them are nine point eight of total graded. Not a bad book. Pretty interesting. I like Red Hulks because the Red Hulk is my favorite character ca color kind of Hulk. Does that make sense? No, my favorite color is red, and this is the Red Hulk, so I really like Red Hulk. Yeah. He's a cool character. I think there's, there's multiple Red Hulks, if I remember correctly, in the comics. A couple other people turn Red Hulk. There, there, and then they work a, for S.H.I.E.L.D. at certain points. There's a P Hulk, you know, Yellow Hulk. Is there a yellow? Yeah, hole? there was a yellow hole. There was the, like, a yellow the kids hole. version, right? Yeah, the triple action. I think yeah, it was called. Those little kids yeah, time. I would say not a bad deal for this book. Interesting. And I don't know how much legs it has, but yeah, it's an interesting book. Yeah, and if we're looking at like next gen heroes, you could kind of consider. Sometimes Red Hulk's a, sometimes a good guy. I mean, innately Thunderbolt's sort of a good guy. He just has bad means of doing it, but it's kind of a next gen villain. So be on the lookout. Obviously, we're going to see him soon in the MCU, and if. I would. I don't know how much more we're gonna see Bruce Banner. I don't know. I feel like it's you know he's still a lot doing motion capture. Still motion capture. Still a lot of yeah. work. So we'll see. We'll see. He might be the up and comer. All right, number four on the list. We got Iron Man issue two eighty two. Woo! Everyone's favorite War Machine cover from nineteen eighty two. And if you want to say this is the original next gen hero, right? Yeah. The yeah. OG next gen hero. Yeah. You sure. got. Uh, Len Kamowski and Kev Hopgood worked on this book together. Not two names you hear too often, but uh, did some cool work on Iron Man back in the day. I love this cover. It's an amazing cover. I like the pink war machine over the Iron Man title. Um, this key significance, first cover appearance of War Machine being worn by Tony Stark. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of weird caveats that go along uh, with the War Machine character. And there's a lot of keys that go along with that as well. Just to, to name a few, some big ones. You got Iron Man 118, his first appearance of James Rhodey Rhodes. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, 170 is first, uh, or yeah, 170 is Rhodes in the Iron Man suit. So I, I, he actually becomes Iron Man for quite a while, like in the oh, comics. Cool. So um, I think even in Secret Wars, he's secretly Iron Man in Secret Wars and nobody else knows that. They're like, come on, Tony, let's go. And he's like, oh yeah, let's. Let's do that. Let's go, you know. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, so it's like it's kind of crazy how that works. And my second favorite book after 282 has got to be West Coast Avengers 94, which is first time Rhodes wears the War Machine armor and calls himself War Machine. And it's a really cool cover. I think it's one of the more expensive books in that entire run, True. if you want to look at it. But a lot of speculation going on with War Machine. Obviously, um, we got to see him in Secret Invasion. I think... He was a cool character in that show. I think he's basically a scroll the whole time, though, so it wasn't, uh, wasn't the real him, but I like a lot of his banter between Nick Fury and that show. Even mm -hmm. though it's not my favorite show, their conversations were really cool, and I think they got to shine as, as the good actors that they are. Don Cheadle kills it and mm -hmm. everything. I'm so glad he is the War Machine and the roads that we got. He's also going to be a major player in Armor Wars, I suspect, as well as, I mean, he's the character was at least in the very first MCU movie and has been in, like, tons since then so true uh, and it doesn't seem like he's slowing down compared to the other characters he's like just keep putting me in everything i'll be in all the shows i'll be in all the movies i'm war machine i'm here to stay right i like money yeah exactly so uh cool book but it made the drop list so it might be your time well price a year ago for the super war like machine <laughs> but, i don't know uh, what's 430 dollars now it's been demilitarized at two hundred and sixty dollars for a nine point eight range two hundred forty five to as high as six hundred. Average sale is three sixty three. It's about a thirty nine percent drop. There's three thousand four hundred sixty five total graded. Nine hundred eighty two of them are nine point eight. It's about twenty eight percent. Getting closer to the point where we like it, but the twenty five or lower. So not bad ratio right there. 
I think that this would be a fantastic book to pick up before Armor Wars. I always thought so, and now it's even better time than when I picked mine up and overpaid. So, <laughs> I may have got slight losses, but you guys might get those gains. If you buy it raw or greater, or however you find it. Yeah. You get a lot of 9.6s, though. Always a lot of 9.6s. A lot of 9.6s. All right, guys. Let's see. Next up on the list, we got number three. We got Black Panther number two from 2005. I was kind of surprised. I thought this would be number one on the list when I saw saw this make our list. I thought it was going to be number one. Um, it's, a, it's a darn shame of a book, unfortunately. We got John Romita Jr., Reginald Hudlin, and uh, this is the first appearance of Shuri, the sister of T'Challa, uh, played beautifully by Lolita Wright in both of the... Um, Black Panther movies, as well as she was in the Avengers too. Oh, cool. uh, you know, Infinity War True. and Endgame. I think showed up yeah. in Endgame. So women power. Yeah, um, it's she, you know she's in a really important character in this book. Got really expensive when everybody was speculating on her for certain things and and stuff like that. And I was just surprised that you know you imagine it go down a little bit, but I didn't think it was going to go down that far. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is going to be over way over a hundred dollar book raw for a long time to come. And now I've seen it surprisingly a lot cheaper than it should be for the book that it is. Um, the only thing I can think of is that she's just not that old of a character in the comic book mythos. You know, like 2005 for a Black Panther character is not that, not that old. But at the same time, I think that's when the Black Panther character, actually the writing got a lot better and the story was like really, really cool around that time. Mm -hmm. 95 is when Black Panther really started to get a little more interesting, you know. Um, but... You know, silver and stuff is always good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I love Y'all, I like it. Fantastic. <laughs> Hit him with them numbers, though, Zach. Shuri style. It was purring with great fervor a year ago <laughs> at $393 for a CDC 9 parade. Now, it's took away the catnip. Nothing's good about it. Not joking. It is at $228. Range, $165 to $450. Uh, average sale is $270. Uh, it's a 42% drop. Uh, there's 2,378 uh, 2,378 total graded. 980 of them are 9.8s. It's a 41% of all graded are 9.8s. That's a lot. It's kind of surprising. Yeah. I haven't seen that many 9.8s either, but they're cheap now. Yeah. Way too cheap. They were hoarding it. Yeah, way too cheap. The supply has met the demand on that book. All right, number two. We'll stay in the, in the Shuri well play a little bit so obviously Wakanda Forever came out last year around this time so we got Black Panther number one yeah. from 2009 and this is also Reginald Hudlin so he's still writing uh, Black Panther at that time and uh, J. Scott Campbell cover back when J. Scott Campbell did cover A's which was Strange. I miss those times. I miss those days. He doesn't do it anymore. But um, this, like many other books on our list, which is kind of crazy, this is also first cover appearance of Shuri as the Black Panther, but not her first appearance as the character. Weird. Technically, yeah, no. again, that happens. Which is uh, in Black Panther issue number five is her first appearance in the comics as the character, which clearly the people have spoken, and this is the better cover better cover yeah the more desirable of the two books like so um yeah which is crazy because it was like a lot of other characters are like that like jane foster did that same time too they had her first yeah. first cover, cover appearance, appearance before her first appearance like i said red hulk was sort of the same way too it's weird weird how that works weird how they decided to do that kind of cool but um you don't see it as much anymore obviously black panther forever came out and um I thought that was a win, a win movie for me. I know that it's kind of a 50, 50. It's like not everybody thought it was amazing and not everybody thought it was bad. It's not that quantum mania status, mm -hmm. but uh, I thought it was really good. I thought it was really done. Well, uh, we're very confusing time on like how to like proceed after the passing of Chadwick Boseman. And I think it, it worked out well. It, yeah. it, the, they did, they took care of it uh, perfectly fine. I know with all the confusion on who was going to be the black Panther and I'm sure they, did that on purpose, which was fun for all of us speculators because we're like, is it Killmonger? Is it Umbaka? Is it Shuri? Who are we going to put our money into? And end up being Shuri, and I think that's what we all thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's a little sad that they decided they needed to pass the torch on right away at the end where they're like, here's T'Challa's son, and he's going to be back as the new Black Panther, which is cool, but I think we could have stayed with Shuri for a while, you know? Yeah. And just left it alone. 
could have gone either way. I mean, she clearly like held her own as Black Panther. She fought Namor yep. for you know, took a spear in the yeah. stomach. You know, she could have stayed as Black Panther for a while longer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll have to I see so. how that goes. Um, but be on the lookout for the new stand copy of this book as well. Zach will tell you it's mucho dinero. Mucho dinero. Yeah, it's very expensive and. The real money book, which I think you almost bought a couple I times, almost bought it. is the black and white version of this J. Scott Campbell, which fetches over $800 raw. And uh, there's even, which I do not know why it's not, there's a second print J. Scott Campbell. It doesn't have as good a cover, but it's limited to under 7,000 copies, which is pretty darn cheap. It's like under $100 for that book. Uh, so you might, I don't, I don't know. It. I don't know. I feel but like it's a cool book. She is on the cover. Yeah, she's on the cover. Yeah. She is on the cover. Booty shot. All right, Zach. What's the numbers on this Black Panther one? All right. Price a year ago, it was surely a good buy. Surely, <laughs> surely a good buy at four hundred and seventy-seven dollars. At least you thought. Now it took a drop. It got into the cat's cradle stance at one hundred seventy-seven dollars for nine point eight. Whoa. Uh, one hundred seventy-seven. One hundred seventy-seven. <laughs> Range is. Apparently as low as seventy dollars to as high as four hundred eighty one. Average sales two fifteen or no two ninety five. Uh, <laughs> it's a sixty two percent drop. Uh, there's six hundred and fifty nine total graded. Only one hundred eighty seventy of the one hundred eighty seven of them are nine point eight. Wow. Twenty eight percent of them are nine point eight. Yeah, not bad book. Awesome cover. This is the whole thing I've been talking about about artist covers. Basically, it's not. A first appearance, but it's a great cover with maybe like you could say it's the first cover appearance, and it is so it, at least it has that. But these books can go up like J. Scott Campbell. Everybody wants to collect all the J. Scott Campbell covers all at the same time, so they all go up, and then so everybody's like, All right, I don't need it. Then go down. Same thing with Adam Hughes, and same thing with probably Jamie Tyndall, same thing with Art Adams. All of this stuff, it kind of goes in waves. So don't count this book out, and it's a fantastic time to pick up this book. Ideally signed. Fantastical? Fantastical. It's a perfect time. Again, all right, guys. If you made it all the way to the end, you get the lucky number one drop book of the week. And this was a big surprise, and I'm so sad for this book because we haven't even seen like what could really come of this character. But we got Invincible Iron Man number nine, 2016, Brian Michael Bendis, Mike Diodato Jr., awesome cover. First full appearance of Riri Williams uh, in the prototype armor. Ah. Don't forget, issue number seven is the first appearance of the character Riri Williams, who... Uh, we got to see in Wakanda Forever, Dominique Thorne uh, played Riri in the movie and was kind of the runaway star of, of the show. Really, really cool character. Mm-hmm. I know not everybody knows this. She actually tried out for Shiri in the original Black Panther. And obviously, probably wasn't tall enough for the role. But they liked her so much, they're like, hey, let's set you aside for another cool role, cool role in the MCU. They must have liked her so much. But bringing her back as Riri was really cool. Um, we didn't get, you know, she's only been in like one movie so far and she's set to kind of be the main character of Armor Wars, I think is how Ooh. that's planning to go. So it's just surprising to me that this book was so hot for a while. I mean, it was hard to buy this one for under 100 raw, not even like in a VF form uh, a that's few true. years ago. And now it's like barely 100 as a 9 8. That'll get you those crazy <laughs> numbers, which is which is insane to me. But uh you know, it's going to be interesting. The Armor Wars movie has changed a lot. It started out as a TV show on Disney+, Plus, and then it got changed to a movie. My suspicions, along with some other people, is that Robert Downey Jr. agreed to sign on for the, for the project and only wants to do it if it's a movie because he's probably going to get profit sharing or something like that. And uh, he won't get that if it's a TV show on Disney+, Plus, which is probably why they changed it. So um, hopefully also it's going to be a lot cooler because of that. Because I think if he's in it and he's like this sort of like AI character talking to her in the background is going to be like the new her, her version of Jarvis, I think will be really cool. And they'll have some really cool banter with each other, which is really mm-hmm. exciting. So hopefully that happens. But speaking of all the next gen characters, I mean, this is she's had a major hit just like a lot of other ones. You've got Kamala Khan, which I thought her show was decent. I think her new movie is going to be even better. Fingers crossed. 
But her books were expensive and took a huge dive, which was crazy. America Chavez was also actually an amazing character in the show, and her books took a huge dive. All these next-gen well, characters. I mean, even Miles was able to strife it a little bit, but his books are worth not nearly what they used to be. I mean, mm -hmm. just Ultimate Fallout 4 has held its ground, but all his other keys are like way, way lower than exactly. they were ever were. Not. I don't know if they'll ever go back up, not for a long, long time. So, yeah, might be a little low. Uh, um, yeah, so it's rough. Um, this is a cool book to to have, but Zach will definitely uh, get you those Iron Heart numbers. Yeah, it was a heart the size of three a year ago. <laughs> kind of like the Grinch. Uh, for CG, CGC 9 point, it was $450. Now, you can get one for a cool 165 Wow. Range is 111 to as high as 450 Average sell is 264 it's a 63% drop. There's 3,519 total graded. 1,416 are 9.8 of all graded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of all graded. There's only 40% of all graded are 9.8. Actually, that's pretty high. That seems about that. Yeah, it's a pr pretty that's high. your that's standard um, modern key. Yeah, so I think this is also a great book to pick up. I would probably try to get the ratio variant or even the second print. Oh, yes. That'd be a nice pickup. Actually, surprisingly enough, the Chris Turcotta variant is, uh, like Zach said, is a very expensive book. This, uh, weirdly, that second print one is actually, I think, slightly cheaper than the first print, even though it has, like, her face on the cover, which I think is cool to know. Yeah, yeah, I, I think maybe the second print might be a one to go after. If it's cheaper, it might not be cheaper for much longer because it's notoriously known that the second print is usually printed a lot less than the first. True. Notoriously. It should, most be. Of the it should time. be. Most of the time. Sometimes it's not true, but most of the time. Generally. All right. But uh, yeah, to wrap things up, this is kind of a little special episode before we get Zach's pick of the week. Next Gen Heroes. Um, you got the Comic Games opinion here. I like them. I mean, they're a really big deal about three years ago when everybody was like, spec on all these next-gen heroes, pick up mm -hmm. their first appearance, books are going through the roof. Um, it's not the case anymore, and uh, mm -hmm. it's really rough if you get these books not in a 9-8, and even then, they're not worth that much money what they used to be. I mean, a lot of these books were well over or close to $1,000 in a 9-8, and now they're lucky to break three hundred. dollars um, it's just a tough thing. You may be better putting your money in Silver Age first appearances or Bronze Age first appearances. Unless you really like the character and you just want to have the books in your collection, it may not provide that fruit, the uh, the gains that you're looking for for many years to come. I don't know if we're going to have that same comic boom uh, that we had back in 2020. Not for a while. Not for a long time. Not that these characters or these books are dead by any means, but... I don't know about, you know, putting a bunch into these books and thinking you're going to be able to flip them anytime soon for a lot of money is going to be kind of rough. But right. on that note, Zach will give you his pick of the week. Yeah, it's going to come down to pretty much two of the Iron Man books. I would say probably Iron Man 282 would be the good pickup because it has an iconic cover. It has a character that's pretty much a second to Iron Man as of right now for of the armored people. But at the same time, the bargain price of 165 for CGC 9.8 for the Invincible Iron Man number 9 is hard to pass up to. I'd say if you're just looking for a bargain, I'd say the Iron Man 9, Invincible Iron Man 9. But if you're looking for kind of like long, long uh, term gains, you know, like if you can wait on it, I'd buy the Iron Man 282 at that price of 9.8. I think, I think. That book's always going to command. It's going to be like the Incredible Hulk 340. It just, uh, it's going to, like, it's an iconic cover and has a key along with it. So it's kind of, you know, you got the fruits of both worlds. Yeah. I don't, it, I don't it's know. It's a very I'm original saying. cover, too, you know. It's a very original yeah. cover. Original I mean, great covers are kind of what you need. Yeah. What you need. Yeah, I think that would be a, probably a good pickup. And then if you want a quick flip, that this fireman number nine or if you just want to have a collection for a great price yeah get those games there you go you heard it here first all right guys as usual if you love the drop list as much as we love delivering it do us a huge favor stop what you're doing right now and hit the like button hit it twice no don't hit it twice because that's that's no it doesn't three times is okay twice is not good yeah. but 
definitely subscribe to the channel so that you always know when our new shows are popping off. And come hang out with us on Wednesday. We go live on Wednesday, so if you got that notification bell on, you'll know when we're going live. You get to ask us questions. You get to hang out. We love doing all that. It's a, it's a great, great time. I always look forward to that every Wednesday. And uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, it's exciting. Mm. Well, you have to share also, right? Mm -hmm. Did you forget that part? So you got to share. How you do that is you have to go around like watching people with it, doing this, doing that. Maybe write down a little ledger, take some pictures, you know. Not anything illegal, hopefully. Don't do any of that. Maybe the queen rides around and you're supposed to keep your shutters closed and your name's Tom. You know what I'm getting out with this? Tom Sawyer? No, Peeping Tom. Uh, or Odd Thomas. Odd Thomas? I don't know. I don't think Odd Thomas was a Peeping Tom. He could have been, but he was a Tom. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Got you again. What about Peeping Zach? No, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Until we see you next time, stay safe and remember. Peep on those games. Get those peeping games. Peeping games every day.